So I wanted to go ahead and make a video just so you could see uh, the four joints in action and, uh, and kind of see what the difference is and how it looks and mostly just so you can see what I'm talking about so when you can try it you can notice how it feels. It feels a lot different. Just to recap, uh, most people have mapped, including me at one point, have mapped that they have three joints in their arm, their wrist, their elbow, and their shoulder and that the arm stops at the shoulder. I mean, that's how it looks, it makes sense. Um, but there are four joints. There's the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, and then right here where your collarbone meets your chest plate, that's where the arm actually attaches to your body. Um, and then, of course, we also said that this shoulder blade back here is part of your arm. Um, now, that's kind of weird for some people to think about, but try it real quick. Put your hand over your collarbone and, uh, and notice how when you move your arm, your collarbone moves with it. Uh, whenever you rotate your shoulder, for example, which is supposed to be where your arm attaches to your body, when you rotate your shoulder, your collarbone moves too, as does this shoulder blade back here. You can feel those things. Um, so move, instead of thinking of your arm ending here, move your arm around thinking about all four joints and including that collarbone uh, as part of your arm, and you'll notice that you're able to do a lot more. You have a lot more range of motion, a lot more fluidity with your arm movement. Uh, so some of the differences that you'll see, um, for example, here's me uh, beating time uh, in a four pattern, trying to keep my shoulder stationary and, and not let my collarbone move. Um, okay, so that's about what that looks like. Now, as I'm doing that, especially if I have to go pretty far in on two, I feel a lot of tension in my shoulder. My shoulder is doing, my shoulder muscle is doing a lot of the work. Um, my elbow is doing most of the moving. Uh, my shoulder is not moving so much, but my shoulder muscles are doing a lot of the work. Instead, now try thinking of your entire arm moving. Your collarbone and your shoulder blade may not move that much, but now all of a sudden, if you just let them move a little bit, um, the motion itself is a little more fluid, and your uh, pectoral muscle is now helping out your shoulder muscles as well as some of your back muscles. And you can feel the difference. If you can get to your back muscle, you can feel that that now is helping out with all of the work. Um, so you'll get tired in your shoulders a lot less quickly, and uh, you'll be able to have more range of motion. Um, here's another thing you can check out too. When you reach forward, uh, if my arms stop at my shoulders, then that's about as far as I can reach. Now, if I let my shoulder blades move and I let my collarbone move, all of a sudden I have more range of motion now. I can reach further forward. Um, so whenever you use your collarbone and your shoulder blades as part of your arm movement, all of a sudden you have a lot more reach, uh, a lot more fluidity, and a lot more range of motion. Instead of, if I wanted to give a big cue, instead of only being able to reach this far, now I can reach this far if I want to. And I can reach pretty far before it becomes uncomfortable. So more range of motion from here to here. It's a big difference. So uh, there was a, a video, um, it's on YouTube. It's uh, a documentary about Carlos Cleaver. And um, there is one scene in particular that really sticks with me. And they're talking about how long his arms were. And um, they show this video of him and it's him in slow motion and it's about this kind of view, and you can just see him, and you can see how long and flowing his arms were. And the reason he was able, I mean, it's gorgeous, but the reason he was able to do that is because um, he had his arms mapped to allow his shoulder blades to move forward and to allow his collarbone to collapse as part of his arm movement. So you can reach a lot further forward. All of a sudden, your arms become longer. Um, the only, the last thing too, as you're working with this that I want to point out is that your joints move in kind of a certain order. Um, and it's in the order that we talked about in the blog. Your wrist moves, then your elbow moves, then your shoulder moves, and then your collarbone or your shoulder blade moves. So one, two, three, four. And uh, that's the big thing that was in the DVD that I wanted you to be able to see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, in football, sometimes they teach linemen to lead with their shoulder. And, uh, and when you think about leading with your shoulder, 
Uh, it doesn't always cause injury per se, but it is a little awkward and inefficient. Lead with your elbow and, and uh, your wrist, sorry, lead with your wrist and let everything else follow naturally. Um, all right, well, thanks. I hope that this has uh, helped. I hope it's been interesting. And uh, definitely look into body mapping. Uh, it's, it's very interesting and it will help your ease of movement and, uh, and, and help increase your range of motion and prevent injuries over the long term. It's especially important for things like the difference between students holding their instruments like this and holding their instruments like this. That can make a big difference. Or how they're moving their fingers. Um, if they're moving their fingers like this or like this. Um, of course, that's one we usually talk about. Um, if a flute player is holding their flute like this or like this, yee, that can be bad news. So um, anyway, all of those things are, are really good to look into. Um, and as always, thank you for reading, in this case watching, and uh, until next time, take care.